You can spend years perfecting your techniques, showing up each and every day to do your creative work, and you should. But also, you should hop on a plane, a train, a bus, or a boat, and go see the world. I'm Jeff Katerba, and on this channel, I talk about the creative process and overcoming obstacles so you can follow your dreams. Okay, so let's say you are a painter, a musician, or a writer, and you've been working on your technique, developing your style, finding your voice for a really long time, or maybe you haven't yet tapped into that creative thing or those those things within that you want to pursue. Whether you're already doing your art or just starting out on your creative journey, sometimes the best thing you can do is to go on a different kind of journey, to travel. Travelers often experience a boost in their creativity. History is filled with examples of this. Scores of artists, composers, writers have all benefited from travel. Van Gogh, Chopin, Hemingway, to name just a very few. And also science backs up the cognitive and neurological impact of travel on creativity. Creativity. Traveling abroad broadens the mind. It exposes us to new people and cultures. It broadens our perspectives and builds empathy. When we travel to a new place, our senses are heightened. We literally begin to see the world in a new and unique way. And not just those places we visit, but also the places where we live and ultimately ourselves. In short, travel can stimulate the creative mind. Take the famed painter Georgia O'Keeffe. Born in Wisconsin, she's probably most well known for her paintings inspired by New Mexico. But O'Keeffe also painted skyscrapers inspired by the skyline of New York City. And while traveling to Europe, she found inspiration from the flying itself while gazing from the window of the plane. When I talk about traveling though, I'm not talking about just going someplace as a tourist. I mean, there's nothing wrong with visiting a place with a group or on a tour bus, but to truly benefit from travel, you need to immerse yourself in the local culture and engage with locals. I'm not saying you have to live there. Building in extra time, free time, free space to explore. Instead of trying to pack in lots of obvious tourist destinations during your trip. Stay for a few extra days in a neighborhood and get to know it. Allow time in your schedule to just wander. Get off the beaten path. Definitely get a little lost. Blend in. Smell the smells. Try new foods. Instead of making a bucket list of places you need to visit, fill up your bucket with real life experiences from abroad. Look, I love Paris, but the world is filled with selfies of tourists in front of the Eiffel Tower. I love the Eiffel Tower, believe me. And I love all the incredible museums in Paris. And certainly one can find inspiration by looking at great paintings. But maybe just pick one museum instead of several. Skip the long lines in the queue and instead get to know that cafe on the corner where your Airbnb is located to the point where the waiter recognizes you each time you come in. I don't know, buy a newspaper, take a coffee, sit for hours with a notebook. You don't even have to write anything, it's just people watch. And if you don't know the local language, at least learn a few basic phrases like hello, thank you, and goodbye. That sort of thing will go far with the locals. The other person might very well speak English, but if they don't, if you're making an effort, you'll most likely figure out a way together to communicate, which is an act of creativity in itself, and it's really satisfying. And hey, quick side note, learning a new language can also increase and enhance your creative process. As someone who's been learning French for a few years, I found that it's done amazing things to my creative brain. Not the least of which, I now think differently and more broadly when writing and thinking in English. When traveling, create the time and space for unique experiences and memories you'll come back to time and again. Those are the kinds of things that can deepen your creativity. And I'm not saying that you have to be directly influenced by your travels. Maybe you'll hear sounds in a new way, or maybe light and color and shadow will strike you in a new and unique way. Or maybe an encounter with a shop owner will inspire you to create something new. But at the very least, you'll come away with a fresh look on the world, which can only enhance whatever creative work you're already doing. And hey, if you haven't yet started that work or you're stuck, nothing could be better than and to get a change in perspective, as long as that's not too much of a distraction from your creative work. That's why it's always good to engage all the senses when traveling and not pack in too many touristy things. So you're kind of keeping one foot in the creative world. Okay, so now you're thinking, traveling sounds great to boost my creativity, but it's expensive. Well, yes and no. Depends on your approach. Planning a trip can be expensive, but here's an opportunity for you to use your creative skills to plan a trip that's cost-effective and works for you. Don't travel during the height of travel season. You'd be surprised that some of the flight deals you can find when traveling off season. Yes, it might mean you find yourself in Germany in January. Yeah, it might be difficult to visit a beer garden, but you might also find yourself strolling through a small, beautiful mountain town during a snowstorm. Squinting against the cold and wind as you catch a glimpse of a 
castle on a hill. It's magic. As I mentioned before, I've often been blessed to visit France, but I've rarely eaten in a fancy restaurant. Do I love good food? Of course I do. But if not eating at fancy restaurants means that I can afford to go to France more often and just go walk around, I'll do that any day of the week. I'll do whatever I can to save money on food and fancy hotels, which ties into experiencing a place like a local. Go pick up some street food or go to the market to buy a snack. I don't know, just buy a baguette and walk around with this baguette all day. You can survive on a baguette for one day. And after all, locals probably aren't eating at fancy restaurants night after night either. Live like a local. But hey, if your creative passion is food, I'm confident you can figure out a way to experience incredible meals, even if it means you have to make some sacrifices elsewhere. Use that creative noggin find those ways to make it happen those sacrifices all become part of your creative journey and hey maybe you'll be inspired to create some fancy street food at reasonable prices so that people like me can afford to go to France more often. And okay, so maybe you can't afford to travel abroad. Go visit the next town over or the next state over. But when you do, engage with locals. Dig a little into the local history of the place. You never know what gem you'll discover in even the sleepiest of towns. I still think of something that happened a long time ago as I was driving through the most remote part of Nebraska in the Sand Hills, which are really strange and beautiful, by the way. I was going through a rough patch in my life and recently gone through a breakup. And so I found myself on this lonely two-lane highway, not a person around for 50 miles. And then I came to a small town, like population five. <laughs> I think there were like three buildings. But right there on the center line of this highway was a dog. This dog was just, you know, hanging out, lying around, probably hadn't seen a car in hours. So I slowed way down, but as I approached, the dog still refused to get out of my way. So I carefully drove around the dog and the dog just looked up at me, its tongue hanging out, <laughs> saliva dripping. That dog seemed so happy just doing whatever it wanted to do, like it ran the town. So then I imagined that maybe the dog was the only resident of this town, or maybe it was the sheriff. It's a memory that has stuck with me and one that makes me laugh whenever I think about it. That's a thought I never would have had had I not gone through a breakup and hit the road. Traveling and experiencing new cultures can do wonders for your self-confidence. If you can go and truly experience a new place, a new culture, and immerse yourself and engage with locals. If even for a few days, think of all the amazing things you'll accomplish when you get home. As important as it is to study your craft and to get better and better at it every day, it's just as important to broaden your horizons. And one of the best ways you can do that is to travel, especially when you immerse yourself in another culture, even for a few days. Engaging with others can build empathy and can help you see the world in a new and unique way, which will absolutely enhance your creativity. I believe in this so much I encourage you to build travel into your regular creative process, whether that's a trip abroad or something within a short drive. If you're on a budget, I'm confident you can use your creative skills to make it happen. Not eating at the finest restaurants or going to all the big tourist attractions can actually be a benefit. It might allow you the time and space to experience life more like a local. Hey creatives, I'd love to hear about your travels near and far and how those travels have inspired your creativity. So be sure to leave a comment below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you want more content like this on the creative process and overcoming obstacles, be sure to subscribe. TV's Rick Steves, travel guru and one of my heroes, often ends his program by saying, keep on traveling. Well, to paraphrase Rick Steves, I might say something like, keep on traveling and keep on creating. Thanks for watching.